Patreon family, it's me, I'm Professor Moptop. Welcome to another week here at Beetle U. Thank you as always, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That covers all of the thank yous. And for the week, you're going to get four hunks of audio about two really cool Paul McCartney songs. They are from the Sgt. Pepper album, which are always interesting to talk about. The first song you're going to hear about dates us back as uh, possibly 1957. It's Paul McCartney's when I'm 64. Now, as a kid, Paul thought that his father's music was really cool. Jimmy Mack was the name of Paul's father, and he was in a band, and he played trumpet until, as Paul says, his father's teeth gave out. But Paul loved the music. He absorbed as much as he could, and when he wanted to write a song, he wanted to write a song that sounded like an old song. This is even at 16 years old, and um, it's weird to think of now that Paul McCartney is far beyond 64 years of age, but as a teenager, he thought maybe it was a little bit, uh, a little bit cruel to have to grow up and get gray and lose your hair. It wasn't necessarily as sincere and loving as you might think, but that's McCartney. He is witty. Well, sometimes Paul would play the songs when the power would go out at some of the early gigs that they had. Sadly, none of these are on tape, primarily because if the power was out, there was no way to record things. Um, when they started recording songs for the Sgt. Pepper album, which wasn't quite the Sgt. Pepper album in late 66, early 67, they weren't exactly sure what their next step was going to be. They had Strawberry Fields Forever, they had Penny Lane, and they had When I'm 64, and they weren't sure what they were going to put out as a single and what they would put on the album. Ultimately, they decided that they would put Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane on a single, and they would keep When I'm 64 around for the album. It was the first song that they started working on after Revolver. Um, on the day that they recorded, you'll hear in the audio, they first recorded some Christmas recordings for Pirate Radio, and then they started doing When I'm 64. There's three-part harmonies on it. There's a chime played by Ringo. There are clarinets that Paul McCartney wanted. He asked George Martin if he could have a Rudy Tootie sort of uh, addition to the song, and that's exactly what George Martin delivered. The other cool McCartney song that we're going to hear about this week in your audio file is Lovely Read a Meter Maid. Um, in England, traffic wardens are the people who would give tickets if you were parked illegally. Paul found out that in America, they were called meter maids, and he thought that was cool because he thought maid had kind of a sexual connotation. I think he was thinking French maids. Um, he got a ticket at some point in time by a woman named Mita Davies, who gave Paul a ticket, and apparently right after the, uh, she issued the ticket to Paul, which she put on his windscreen, um, Paul had a conversation with the girl, and he says he was going to write a song about her. Well, the timeline might be a little bit confusing. Paul McCartney might be bending the truth a little bit about this. However, the song definitely became Lovely, Re Lovely Rita Meter Maid. Now, in the song, the Paul is in love with the girl, who might be a little bit less than attractive. This is a new, interesting way for McCartney to write about a character in a song. Usually he sings about nothing but perfect love. This is a little unusual. When they finally do go out for tea, it's interesting that Rita pays, and then when they go home, Paul uses the phrase, nearly made it, which is, uh, which is interesting for Paul. It's sort of a love song, not really a love song. It's very McCartney. Um, when they recorded the song, John and Paul, John and George play acoustic guitars, and there's uh, Ringo on drums, of course, who does a fantastic job, as always. There is some tape speed manipulation all over the place. Some of the things were recorded fast, some were recorded slow, some were recorded right on. Um, when they were overdubbing, they were coming up with new and interesting ways of microphoning the studio. Uh, for Paul's bass, they put the amp in the middle of the room, this gives it a completely different feel. Uh, they also play these homemade kazoos, which are made with paper and combs. You could hear these isolated uh, kazoos in the song. Um, near the end, George Martin plays a piano solo uh, right before the panting of the song. That was played very, very slow and then sped up. Paul wanted a honky-tonk style piano. There's more tape man manipulation on that. They also put a little bit of piece of tape on the uh, playback reel, so it would give it kind of a wobbly, so it sort of sounded like an old song. It's a very, very interesting and fun Beatles song. It fits in great with Sgt. Pepper and some of the wonderful characters, and you're going to be getting four hunks of audio via Wii Transfer 
in your mailboxes. As always, thank you a million times over. I hope everyone is enjoying their spring, even though it might be a little bit cool wherever you may be. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're doing it very, very well. Thank you so much. As always, I am Professor Muptup.